Hey there, it's been a minute since I've done an update for Rails UI. I've been quite busy on this behind the scenes, a lot of early mornings, sometimes late nights, uh, just trying to squeeze it all in. Lots happened, but I think most of the stuff I have pushed that you can use today is mostly visual. So the admin area of the configuration side has gotten an update to be a little more user-friendly. Um, it's all just prefaced with the eventual ability to have multiple themes, multiple component libraries, all those all those things I'm thinking of as a building this. So wanted to kind of get that groundwork laid. Um, using the snippets and whatnot are a lot easier now since there's like a preview switcher and a code switcher. I've seen that on other UI libraries. So I'm kind of borrowing that or stealing it as you would say. Um, but let me walk you through just kind of what that looks like. So it's just less, less of me talking and more of me showing. So I'm going to just say Rails new, I'm going to call this Retriever just to show you. Um, no, nah, actually, I'll, the the new theme is also in progress. Um, it's called Retriever, but it's actually an old theme. So that's kind of the backstory there. But I have yet to integrate it to the app, the gym. Um, it's going to be an actual premium one because I have extended it quite a gr great big deal. So that will be the first version of this that's going to be essentially private and what will be how, you know, progress keeps going on this because I'm working a lot on it. And I feel like that's kind of one of those things. If you're going to find a product that actually makes some money, we'll see if it works. But all that's, you know, hearsay. Um, let me skip all that junk and go back into showing you what this looks like. I'll just do like a maybe a hound. Or let's do shepherd demo just to show you what the new UI looks like. Not a massive change, but it is something that I wanted to just kind of post an update about. Um, when you do install Rails UI, you can do it just like we did. Create a new Rails app with basically no front end flags for max compatibility. It's going to be easier to do that. Um, you can do anything with tests and all that other stuff if you want to configure it or be in API only mode, all that stuff. Um, I don't know why you'd use Rails UI and API only, but whatever floats your boat. So let's CD into Shepard demo. And I'll actually install Rails UI in the gym file. I had an old version here. Boot that up, shoot it over in the gym file. In the very bottom, I'll add this from the read me here you can just copy this line it's probably the easiest bet and you want to make sure you source the main branch when you install this we're going to source it directly from github so the repo itself it's easier to, instead of using uh, something like ruby rubygems.org for the moment since it's kind of still beta um, or development preview as the layman as the more sophisticated developer might call it. <laughs> anyway, let's install it. And I'll say bundle. Great. Uh, there's a few dependencies, very little, honestly. So with this update, there's also some uh, devised stuff happening that is configured to create some sample users by default. So that's one little uh, advancement that happens. Uh, a couple other things related to mailers is integrated. And branding gets a shift so that when you update your theme or, or create your theme, or I'm calling them templates now, excuse me, um, the branding, whatever you change it to is actually, you know, showcased on the, the templates that get generated. So a lot of talk there without showing you, it probably doesn't make much sense. So let me get to that. So we create, we added installed, we'll do Rails, Rails UI installer to get the, the preface, uh, dependencies and assets and stuff into the app. This essentially just takes care of the, the cruft of removing something like import maps, replacing with ES build, adding all the reusable layouts and shared partials and stuff that we'll use pretty much from template to template, I'm thinking. Um, that will evolve, of course, as uh, different templates take different shapes as far as components go too. So as you can see here, I re actually created some demo users. You can see those in your app as you uh, boot it up. There are new mailer templates. So if you view Rails, localhost 3000 Rails info mailers or mailers, um, there's going to be some, some pre-built stuff there now to preview that's already part of Rails UI. Uh, you do need to install a template first. So that's one caveat. But we've got assets, icons, a lot of icons. Those are hero icons. And yeah, quite a few things that just come with the stack. So that's the whole point, kind of making that 
that configuration part just you know painless no need to do it on your own uh, especially with the ui world so with that installed we can boot up the app and go into the I, i'd call it a gui now you can install a template from the tasks menu if you really want to but you couldn't configure stuff like this per se you could i guess you could if you added a rails ui, rails UI configuration but i'm just thinking out loud there so if you were to change your app name you can do that from this view. You can see that up. if you've installed this before, it might be slightly different looking. Um, nothing too crazy, to be honest, but there will be more of a theme gallery here. You can you know, pick and choose from. So this is how you select it, and you can go preview it here. Uh, so let's go and just say Shepherd. I don't know, demo. Then down here is the new install button. So you'll need to install it first before you can go and see any components. So that's part of the approach. We're going theme-based uh, components. So we'll go ahead and install all those, save changes. It takes a little bit because it's creating some assets behind the scenes as far as uh, partials, uh, copying over any images, everything else in the from the gem. Now, here's your essentially new configuration layout. It, since you've chosen a theme, you can't really change it from this point forward. So you'd either want to create a new Rails app and do that again, or just you know tweak this to see fit. Shepherd's based on a kind of a real estate property management software stack, so that's kind of the approach with this tool. I'm trying to hone in on you know common niches, but also ones that are kind of out there that you might want to take and run with. Uh, it's very hard to honestly predict where that will go. I think there'll be quite a few themes as a result. I'm calling them themes, but I'm going to change that to templates here soon. Um, I don't know. It's not a big deal. But you can go preview it here. I do host that right now on Cloudflare pages, but I'm going to eventually host that on the domain itself. So it'll be kind of just one place. So you can see a source of truth for all the demos. Um, a lot of work to do that, so I just haven't yet. But of course, you have your color stack here. So this is an addition to Tailwind's colors. So my thought is, if you want to brand it, your buttons or accent colors, those can be your primary and secondary. And then anything in addition, you can add as needed with Tailwind. Um, there would be cool someday to maybe even add a tertiary or just the ability to extend this on your own, but I, I think that's a little more advanced than it needs to be at the moment. Pages, this is opt-in UI. Uh, so it's essentially templates that if you wanna use, you can. Otherwise, the, the design patterns over here where you're gonna find your components. Um, as you can see, I have it like branded to be your app. Um, and this got an update too, so it's got the new UI for it. Uh, you can just go to, to each page. It's kind of a neutral color palette, but essentially you get to zoom point and click. You got your scroll spire, you know, sidebar over here. It jumps you around wherever you need to go real quick. You can preview and uh, check out the code. Then there's a tab switcher for different code samples. So eventually I'll extend this. I think there's other frameworks out there that have got my attention that are more component based. So never fear that will come. It's just, you know, a tall lift at this time. So that's just something to keep in mind as you're viewing this or checking it out. Um, but yeah, everything from input based UI to actual repeatable elements like data lists are all here. It's a little gross, all scrunched up, but there you go. And it's just ready to rock and roll. So you can copy and paste these. Um, we, these are typically in use in those view templates too. So you could copy and paste from there if you want. Um, but this is just kind of a general guideline to use and customize as you need. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the big change as far as the UI goes. Um, if you want to check out what different colors would look like, I'm, I'm going to set a couple here just to show you by example. All right, so I set this up. It's not very smooth as far as like setting each of these colors each is a color picker so as you can see you click on it and change it kind of painstaking to do but it's not a big deal since you can only you only really need to do it once but there are tools out there that help you generate these palettes um, if you need to use those so i'll save changes and if you saw on the front end it's typically a red button or something in this default theme it comes with default colors but if you change those colors of course you'd expect the branding to update so if we were to go check it out now um, I'll go install some pages real quick so we can, but you notice that green's already here as an accent. So that's kind of neat as far as uh, customize, customizing your palette goes. So I think this was the previous update that this occurred, but I realized there was a lot of bugs with that. So on the Helm theme in particular, the other theme in the stack, it wasn't actually working. So 
that's been fixed. As far as I can tell, most everything is smooth and working well. So uh, if you spot anything, let me know in a GitHub issue on the repo. But yeah, if we go back to say the pricing page, you can see that green now reflects the change and it's all updated in real time as you need to. So pretty cool. That's all baked into Tailwind and Rails UI. So uh, other things that I have added that are little minor tweaks and I think are useful in this case, of course, I mentioned the, the switchers. So now you've got, it's basically just all previews as far as you can see and not just kind of littered with code and previews, which is kind of hard to, to scan, honestly. So this stuff's kind of solved for and just looks a lot nicer in my opinion. Um, then also, uh, if you go into, yeah, like the mailers are more full screen now. So it's just got a, a nicer preview as far as that goes. But the last little outlier thing that I updated was just the routes UI. Uh, it's also less, you know, loud and proud and more just kind of white space and black and white. So it looks better. Finally, the mailers, which I've helped get across the line, we've got some defaults that come now. So with Rails UI, there's a three defaults. I'm going to extend this to be a lot more like marketing, other uh, maybe use cases, but these come by default in your stack and are branded too. So that you'll notice the colors don't reflect because you can't quite use Tailwind CSS in emails. So there's a separate little solution for that for emails. I would recommend reading the docs if you want to figure out how to customize those it's pretty straightforward but this is like the default colors in this case. So that's how and why it might look different to you than that green we changed before. But that's essentially it as far as the biggest updates. There's the device templates too, some come stock. And in the app on your end, you can uncomment a couple other previews for if you use like confirmations or other, other aspects of device, those come stock too and ready to rock and roll. You just need to change out your assets, essentially like your, your logo, maybe your whatever social icons you want to use. Added them all for now, or a lot of them. But yeah, that's the biggest update. Aside from that, I've actually created a new retriever theme. So this has been updated since the initial install of Rails UI, or initial launch, essentially. That was my first, I guess, guinea pig, and it used to be Bootstrap. So I wanted to just walk through what it's changed to. Um, right now, it's all Tailwind-based, so it got an, a sizable update to be honest so this is going to be a, essentially in a premium theme um, because of that and it's the first of its type so figured it, if it's the first of the the free it could be the first of the premium af after this big change that's gone so we've got your typical pricing and and kind of marketing pages again work in progress as far as marketing pages go that will be something we extend as we go um, but that you know you can add pages for days for websites so it's something to keep in mind but uh, different login screen now, kind of putting OmniAuth first in this concept. And then we could go back to actual admin stack was essentially more of a dashboard layout. Quite nice. It's got this little padding on the edge of, I, I like. So it's a little containerized version that's fixed on the, the menu up top. Um, got your change log built in, your help docs built in navigation or notifications excuse me and a lot of account stuff so this is all just pre-baked in so it's essentially it's all for you just need to hook it up uh, a lot of no notification stuff team-based things so managing that sending invites maybe using device invitable it's not actually integrated into this but you could at least have that ui solved for same with billing if you do something like stripe element or something that's more less of a Stripe checkout session kind of thing. This is solved for. And integrations, if you want to add those at any time. This is all static at this point. And this is actually not in the Rails UI uh, gem just yet because it's going to be in the pro version. Um, but that's just kind of showing you what can be done. Like I, I might have mentioned it, but I'm working on a marketing website as well. So all of this will be on that coming soon. Uh, a lot to come with that. There's a, quite a big lift to get that up and working. Um, I've been tossing and turning around how to go about giving access to the code and making it easy to onboard all those things. And I finally settled somewhere and it's working pretty well. We'll see how it works in the long run, but I like it. 
but yeah, we could walk you through maybe how this could work. It's it's essentially like this this theme is based on maybe like a deployment or a pass um, platform as a service kind of app. So taking that and running with it. So in this case, maybe you'd go into your GitHub uh, app and you have all this interior activity or overview. So here's your config environment, variables, add-ons, all that stuff, recent activity, contributors, uh, and then you can just kind of see what's going on with it. So you've got domains, access, different settings for that. You can reveal your key and values if you have environment variables. Do all the things you need to do for a server if you're running one. Uh, that's a big lift. Then you have your servers independent of that. So you have different servers, different apps within servers, domains, databases, you know, all that stuff. And you can see different patterns for the UI for that. If you want to change those domains, similar model, it's kind of just different UI databases, very simple deploys, just kind of a, you know, interactive way to see what's going on with the apps, user management, kind of these foundational things you might need and might not, but it is one of those things that if you decide to extend whatever you're building, you can add these and copy and paste them into your app and just extend them from there. It's kind of the approach. It's just kind of like, here are some building box or blocks that I'm considering or thinking of when I'm doing these themes and components. And I feel like maybe there's a world where um, you could take those and run with them as far as this goes. So there'll be like a whole component library like you saw with uh, the install here for this specific theme. So it's all theme based, like these design patterns. So hopefully that, that clicks. I feel like maybe the communication isn't quite there as far as how I'm doing this very first foundational is I'm creating a theme or a template for it. And then from there I'm extracting components and thinking, thinking in terms of if someone were to like, want to just build an app and have UI that is fairly close, not quite, uh, to solve a lot of their problems, this is kind of the approach they could take and just, you know, save so much time in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, that's essentially it. I want to just walk you through that. That's what's to come uh, soon. So there will be a refreshed marketing site probably going live with the next update. Uh, so I'll announce that and send another email to show you about, or at least talk you, walk you through that. And then just kind of maybe announce future progress, ideas, all that stuff. So if you had feedback, have questions or suggestions, I'm really open to any of that and would love to hear it, to be honest. So please hit reply on this email, or if you're on this video, wherever you're seeing this, if there's a comment section, go ahead and leave a comment. If you have any questions, I'll reply to you. No problem. Uh, so yeah, that's it for now. Thanks for watching this far. I know it's been like 20 minutes or so, maybe less, but I appreciate it. All right. So long.